So uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Vito, uh, our the founder of 42 on, he uh, uh, did an interesting talk called 10 Ways to Break Your Ceph Cluster. And uh, we thought it would be kind of fun, kind of interesting to uh, to fi- to uh, uh, share our findings and share our, uh, our five more ways to break your Ceph Cluster. Here we have the overview of the five. We also included a bonus one. So one of the ways to break your Ceph cluster is uh, by over or underestimating your uh, automation tool, whatever you are using. It doesn't really matter. Um, we had two cases where something like this happened. One case, we had a script that was run in front of the automation. So automating the automation tool um, and through all of that, uh, some checks were missing and it didn't check uh, for the amount of of, uh, monitors that was set. And it just uh, didn't fill out that variable, overruled the existing configuration Applied it, said everything is okay, yes to all, and started removing the monitors. Um, and this tool is also pretty uh, thorough. So it uh, also removed all the monitor databases and everything. There was no trace of them anywhere. Um, fortunately, we could recreate them by scraping the OSDs and the customer didn't lose any data. But there was severe downtime, obviously. Uh, in a similar case, it was quite interesting in the early releases of uh, Ceph Admin. We had somebody who um, also lost their monitors. Uh, this was a case of, well, a monitor just monitors the system, so I can just remove it uh, and recreate them, not understanding the exact importance of the monitors. Um, we found out that somebody was using Docker commands in the backend. Um, and we was removing those, or did remove monitors when he saw some errors uh, and tried to recreate them. Uh, fortunately, we found the original mon di- uh, directories uh, still hiding in, uh, in the Docker directory. And we could recreate them. Also, not no data lost, but uh, availability was not great. Another one is uh, the uh, size is two was the previous one, but we kind of revised that to the min size is one. Uh, we we still recommend that any in any case you always run with size is three if you value your, your data uh, or do something with erasure coding, but uh, We'd rather not see sizes two. And if we see sizes two, then uh, please, please don't go with min sizes one. Um, if you have a good case, then you will only have recovery and found, which is bad enough. In a bad case, you will just lose placement groups. We've had a couple of cases like this in the last two years that, that are just bad in every way. We also found an interesting case, a couple of interesting cases where um, people didn't complete the update in the Ceph documentation. There's an update guide, but it's it's not specific to a release. It's a generic update guide. Um, and especially with the upgrades to Nautilus and the uh, messenger version version two um, yes we saw that that there was some discrepancies and some parts of the upgrade were never executed and mir- miraculously the cluster will survive for a some time um, but then it will break and it will break badly uh, for people and it's very hard to troubleshoot if you don't know what you're looking for so what you're looking for is something that looks like this um continuously for a long time so uh and the solution is to 
finish the update, finish all the steps for updating to Nautilus or uh, Octopus. I've seen a cluster that survived into Octopus with this. Then you have the uh, completing an update too soon with the uh, enhanced security for 14.2.20. Uh, we had a customer that already set it to false but didn't upgrade all the demons. Um, not really big impact, just very annoying that his RGWs weren't getting connected. This one was also very interesting. Uh, was it, we took a while to figure this one out. So um, we had a customer that was having problems with um, with their RGW environment. Um, and after a while, we we saw that the IP addresses in the service map for the RGW service only it showed three RGWs. Um, and the customer said, I have nine RGWs and, and we saw the IP addresses in the map updating all the time. Uh, now what we then saw is that there were nine RGW demons running on the network and they were all uh, claiming to be only three of them. So uh, they were all skipping and updating the IP address and uh, the load balancer in front of them was trying to restart the uploads and it was a, a bit of a mess. Uh, they had a lot of filled up uh, multi-part uploads. Um, it was not performing well um, and they were actually already investing in into new hardware. We fixed it by just having nine names that fixed the problem and we uh, we scraped the cluster for uh, uh, orphaned objects. We have one bonus one, which is blindly trusting the PG autoscaler. So uh, I think a lot of this has to do with Chef becoming much easier to use. So uh, we see um, much more installs uh, and you don't have to understand or know as much as you used to. Um, but we've seen that, that clusters are installed with all, with all the defaults, but they were reasonably large. And then um, they start ingesting data. Uh, and that's when the PG autoscaler comes in and says, ah, right, now we need some more placement groups here. And then it starts splitting the placement groups and then you start ingesting more data. And then it says, oh, then you need some more placement groups. So, uh, and this was a cluster that was in the, uh, almost a petabyte. Uh, so it was mis having misplaced that data for a long, long, long time, especially because they made the mistake of not having any SSDs in the cluster at all. So we also looked at the original 10 uh, that Vido did. I, I uh, urge you all, if you haven't seen that one, also look at the original 10 ways to break your Ceph cluster. Um, but from the original 10, there's number six that we don't, don't no longer consider a way to break your Ceph cluster because it's been superseded by Bluestore Exit. We don't use XFS uh, that much anymore. Uh, there are also talks of removing file store entirely from Quincy, I believe. So um, this is the one that is fixed by Blue Store. Uh, I think there is work on on the way to also improve the uh, auto scaler. So that's also great. Uh, but th most of them are still ways to break your Ceph cluster. That's it. Thank you very much for the time. And if there are any questions, I uh, please do so.
We have a very quiet audience today. And there's no other people are having issues uh, seeing the slides. I have a question. Is Dan here? Hey, Dan. Yeah, hi. Um, so we've luckily never had to restore mons from the OSDs. Like we've never yeah. lost all our mons. I'm just curious if you, I know there is a documented procedure somewhere on the Ceph docs. Yeah. I guess. It, it works. Is, is that what you followed? Is it, does that yeah. work? Does that still work? Yeah, that works. Okay. Good it takes know. a little, it takes a little time, but it works. But it, it, it copies the data of the database over to, from the OSDs, adds it to the database. Then, um, so this, the lucky, we were very lucky. This was a very young cluster. So there was not too much data to scrape. Uh, but I think if your cluster grows and your your usage, you use it much longer, uh, much more changes, then that process will also take uh, much longer. We were fortunate enough that it was enough in production that you don't want it to lose it, but but not it was not an old cluster. So with your with your supported deployments, do you have any backup strategy for the mons, or do you sort of rely on them not getting uh, t destroyed like that? And like, I guess because it's not really possible to back up the mons, is it? Not really. No. No. Yeah, you can back them up, but the data is is always you're always behind enough that it doesn't uh, make sense. We've also seen. I could have included that one too. We've we've seen that somebody had a virtual install and they had some interesting data to them on a virtual uh, Ceph install. Uh, and somebody was updating and then the updates didn't go very well and he just rolled back the virtual machine on all different states. So those are oh. the things that you can also encounter. Yeah, that that was the sound I made as well. Oh. So uh, yeah, there's no real backup strategy there. What we what we try to do is just monitor your mons very well, make sure that you have enough of them uh, uh, bet on uh, maybe two different hardware vendors, so that you are unlikely to encounter the same problem on um, on all of the monitors. Uh, but yeah. That's that. It's very hard to to back them up. There's no, you you should stop your entire cluster and not have anything move at all, and then you can. There's no way to restore. Thank you. All right. Thanks for the question.